Hey guys, Pimatan here. Welcome back to our channel. So today we're gonna do a part two of our aftermarket cooler versus stock cooler videos. We are here to answer the age old question. If you have 50 US dollars, should you go for air or should you go for water? Watch the end of the video, find out which is the better solution. Come back to the video. So in front of us we have the two AMD stock coolers. So we all know this is the AMD stealth and this is the AMD red prism. AMD stealth, we all know why it is, it's just a very basic cooler similar to the Intel stock coolers. It's still better than the Intel stock cooler, but of course there's nothing to talk about it. Oh yeah, I have some uh, <laughs> some NMI whatever. <laughs> This is the Rift Prism. So it's a much thicker and beefier cousin of the Rift cell. So you can see it's a much thicker heat sink and copper heat pipes to dissipate the heat much more efficiently. So we also have these cables for the RGB to make all the RGB lightness coolers come up when you're talking to the computer. But of course, we are not here to talk about stock coolers. We need to bring out these aftermarket counterparts. Okay, so now in front of us, we have the two aftermarket solutions as recommended by us. For the air solution, which is the Priorit H7. This MSRP is about $65. Sing dollars. This is the water cooling solution, which is the Cooler Master Master Light 120, which MSRP is $6.59. Right now, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and see which is better, air or water. So right now I'm going to get Gordon in to install one of these at one time to test to see whether it's better than the stock solutions provided. So Gordon, please take over. Gordon here. So what I'm having here right now is the Kai H700 mm air cooler. So what I have laid out is of course we have first the air cooler here. This is the back plate with all the required screws on there. The one thing I always like about the Cryo line of air coolers is that they have one single plate and one single set of screws for both Intel as well as AMD. This makes things very simple if let's say you mount this on an Intel system and you want to switch off to AMD and vice versa. Not like a lot of other brands where they have different back plate, different screws for LJ115, another set of screws for AM4, a third set of screws for LJ2011. Kudos to them. In this other box here, we have a set of wire mounts. This is for if you want to strap a second fan onto the H7, but you have to buy the fan yourself separately. So the mount is here if you have a second fan lying around. And of course, last and not least, we have the Cryo CP7 thermal base. Now, I know a lot of other reviewers, what they're probably going to do is they're going to use some fancy paste like Arctic MX4, that kind of thing. How I'm going to conduct this test is that we are going to use the stock paste that comes with each of the coolers. So, for the two stock coolers from AMD, we're going to use the paste that it comes with. For the H7, likewise, we're going to use the CP7 that you find inside the box. So now we've skipped up here to the part where we've gotten the back plate for the H7 in. So you can see down here, there are the four screws along with the, the rubber mounts. So before we get the heatsink itself on, put the thermal paste. Contrary to one guy that starts with the letter V, yes, this is getting to be a very old joke by now. You do not do cappuccino art on your CPU, you just put one small little dot like that and you're done. The next step after you put that one small little dot, do take note, before you proceed to mount the heatsink, there is a small little protective plastic film down here. Please take it out, because if you don't take this out and you turn on your set, you are going to be in for a lot of pain. With the protective film out, yeah, you see there's the nice nickel plated copper section here. Again with nickel plated copper heat pipes going all the way up into the aluminium fins. Let's get this part in. The H7 is nicely mounted in. As you can see, a pretty beefy, decent sized cooler takes up one big chunk right over here. So let's put the panels back on and let's see how she looks like with everything on. So here we are conducting our test with the H7. To give you a brief overview as to how our test setup is like, we have a Ryzen 5 3600, 16 gigs of GSQL Flex 3200 MHz CL16 RAM. We also have an RTX 2060 inside there, all in a micro ATX case. If you can look on the screen now here, we are testing the temperatures and load using IDA64. Okay, the parameters for how we are going to test all four of the CPU coolers will be as follows. We are going to set the clock speed for the 3600 at 4 GHz or core. The V core will be set at 1.3 volts. This is to give an apple to apple comparison. Same clock, same V core. 
called voltage. Given all same variables, which one of these four is gonna come out on top? So right now we are testing the H7 itself. So from the results I see from here, the CPU T die is being read at about 69.8. So put that as about roughly more or less 70 degrees for the CPU stress test. How does it compare with the other three? Yeah, that you're gonna have to find out a little bit later. As you can see, I am doing up the Color Master 120mm AIO. For the looks of it, it's gonna be considerably more difficult to put together compared to just now the Cryo H7 120mm air cooler. For one thing, it comes with a multitude of screws. First, it comes with these long low fellas. This is for you to mount the fan to the radiator. So you can see it's just nice, long enough for you to punch through. Make sure always use your correct screw. The short little ones are for this side, this is the side where I'm going to mount onto the chassis later, so the short screws mount like that. Then there's a whole plethora of other screws as well, which I have taken apart. The one thing I'm not really a fan of in this particular AIO is got a lot of screws, each for different platforms. You've got one set of screws here for the LGA2011 platform. You have a whole bunch of little adapters for what looks to be the AM3. This one here is for Intel, so that's another pair. And this is the back plate for Intel as well as uh, AMD AM3. According to the manual for this AIO, for AMD AM4, it uses the default AMD back plate. We are going to be using these small little screws to secure these things onto the block, so like that. So it looks like you got a little hook here. There'll be two of these little square hooks. And these correspondingly go on to two little black hooks. One here and one here. This hook arrangement is only used by a few other air and liquid coolers. Most notably, it is used by the Rave Prism. The Rave Spire and the Rave Stealth do not use this two hook system. So without further ado, let me get on to completing the setup for this one and mounting it inside the set. So I've gotten the clips on already as well as the fan. So what I'm gonna do first and foremost, as you can see here, I'm not gonna use any fancy paste. This is the Master Gel paste that comes with the Chrome Master, Master Liquid Light. Again, just like the H7 just now, please do not do... Uh, just put one small dot like that, yes, and you're done. So what I'm gonna do here is, unlike the H7, which only requires one fan header, the 120mm here has two headers. So you have one right over here, this is for the 120mm fan, and you have another one that comes from the pump, from the CPU block, which is, this is for the pump. What I'm gonna do is connect this to one of the system fan headers, a little bit hard to see but yeah so it's connected to the system fan header and this one you can see right over here is the fan on the AIO this is gonna go to the CPU fan header now there may be a situation where you may not have an additional fan header for this block to connect to. So for the purpose of this test and uh, for the benefit of those who may not have this additional connector, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the pump header to 100% all the way. Uh, there's not going to be any voltage or PWM speed control on the pump. It's going to run at maximum. But the CPU fan header will control the fan on the AIO the same as the other three solutions. Okay, likewise, before you put anything, just remember, please take out this little piece of plastic. You'll notice one thing that contrasts with the H7 itself. The H7 is nickel plated copper, which is why the H7, the plate was all nice glossy silver. This one is copper. It's not plated with anything. This is pure copper. So we can also do a little comparison. Nickel plated copper versus pure copper. Which design approach works better? Let's find out. Right, the cables are in. Let's see how this thing goes. So right now, we are trying to configure the AIO with it. And the one thing that strikes me is that I have set the pump to maximum RPM. And it sounds like a toilet in there. <laughs> yeah. There's this little flushing sound coming from here. So anyway, that's one thing to take note of. I have set it to maximum. Wi-Fi control disabled. DC is set to maximum. So according to the readout, we are looking at 2200 RPM for the pump as well as for the CPU fan header. We are currently looking at 1000 RPM for the fan on the AIO. TPU temperature at idle is 32 degrees. We'll run the test and we'll see how this guy does on load. 
Okay guys, welcome back. So we have done all four tests for all four coolers. Gordon has the results in hand. So Gordon, will you kindly please take us through what are your results for all these four coolers? Okay, the first and foremost is the Rave Stealth Cooler. Idle temperature stands at about 48 degrees and the temperature on load under IDA 64 is a really really toasty 85 degrees. Keep in mind that all these readings are done at 4 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. So next up we have the Prism. Now this guy was quite a surprise. The difference in either temperature between the prism and the stealth wasn't much. This guy was 46, the rave was 48. The shocking part is the temperature on low. This guy maxed out at 74 degrees. This is more than 10 degrees cooler than the stealth. This is quite a surprise actually. Next up, we have the aftermarket option. We have the Cryoic H7 120mm air cooler, which goes for Singapore $65 or below US $50. On my chart, the idle is at a nice and cool 40 degrees, so it's a whole 6 degrees cooler than the prism and a whole 8 degrees cooler than the stuff. The temperature on load is about 70 degrees. So about 4 degrees difference from the prism and about 15 degrees difference from the stuff. Wow, you may look at first glance and yeah, you know what? The H7 temperature on load is not really that much cooler than that of the prism. You do have to consider two things. Number one, even though the load temperature difference is less than 5 degrees, the idle temperature difference is more than 5 degrees. The other thing you also have to consider is that during our test, we also noticed that the H7 was quite a fair bit quieter than the Prism because the Prism maxes out at about 3k RPM. The H7, being a bigger 120mm fan, it maxes out at about 1.6k RPM. So if you compare a Prism versus the H7, if you have a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, should you move up to the H7? Well, it kind of depends. But I'll say it's probably still a good investment for one thing. It makes your set a lot quieter. Number two, your idols are going to be much better. Now we come to the Cooler Master Master Liquid Light 120. Now this is where things get a little bit weird and disappointing. The CM Master Liquid Light 120 has an idle temperature of 40, same as the H7. For so where it gets a little disappointing, I'll say considering all the hype on liquid cooling, is that the temperature on load maxes out at 68 degrees. So it's only about 2 degrees different from the H7. But there is also one thing I didn't really like about this cool was fan mounted on the AIO. Its maximum speed is about 2k RPM. The fan was considerably Considerably more noisy than the H7. And it was even more noisy than the Prism fan, even though the Prism has a higher RPM of 3000 versus uh, 2000 on the fan on the Cooler Master. So I'm not too sure why is that the case, but this is something you probably have to look at. So in conclusion, eh? or liquid. If I were to pick between these two, I'll still pick the H7. Even though yes, the lot temperature is about 2 degrees higher, but I'm willing to live with that small difference of 2 degrees due to the fact that it's a lot quieter. And the second thing is, I don't have to worry about the possibility of a pump failure. So yeah, at this price range, the Cryo H7 air cooler is the one to go for. We have come to the conclusion, so with $50, Gordon chooses this Cryo H7. Quite amazing tests, a lot of surprising results. So the Ray Prism was actually the dark horse of this yeah, you are. It yeah. was the dark horse. Okay, of course, ever since we started building Ryzen system from first gen all the way up, we've always known that when this guy came out, yeah, with all the copper piping and all that, this guy will be better than both the stealth as well as the spire. But in this video, since finally have the chance to compare between the stealth and the prism, we didn't expect, wow, the gap to be more than 10 degrees. Mm. If you are looking for an air cooler to upgrade from a prism, this is the absolute minimum you should be aiming for. Mm. Nothing less. There are air coolers which are cheaper than this. There are air coolers which are smaller inside than this. Please don't bother because if you're going to look at anything smaller and cheaper than this, you may as well just stick with the prism. Question is, is this readily available in the Americas and in uh, Europe? I would say yes it is. From what I read from the review, these two are quite readily available both in Europe as well as in the United States. So that's why these two are in the comparison here. In Singapore at least, they are easily available. Mm. This guy is from Cobell. Mm. This is from Bandung in Singapore. Mm. So just as a note, both of these coolers were not sponsored to us. We bought this out of our own catching. Yes. <laughs> so I just threw in 150 bucks. I just sent him to Simlim Square to go and buy a cooler. <laughs> these two fellas. Yeah, so air cooler is the way to go at this price range. But if you really want to go to water cooling, I think you have to start paying really more for much better quality of AIOs. So we, we may probably do a part two of this video. Let's see how the response to this is. I'm especially curious to know what if we do a US hundred dollar range. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so if you want to see that happen, make sure you get this video up and soaring and doing very well, well. Like our first comparison video between 
these guys and these guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like this video. Share with your friends and family. Give us comments. Let us know if you really want to see the next test happen. So in the meantime, if you have not seen our first comparison video between aftermarket coolers and stock coolers, make sure to check the video. Then check out my Asus playlist and my Ryzen playlist. Yes, as mentioned, we have a lot of cool new projects coming up for 2020. Make sure to check back our channel. If you have not, make sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the icon and click on the bell to know when I put up new videos. So from me, Raymond Tan and Bonafont Tyco Systems Asia, signing out. Ciao guys, bye!